what would you what would you have done different? I would have wore something different. <laughs> <laughs> You're at home. This is this is New England. You're fine. Um, what does your time playing for the Celtics mean to you, as well as joining a long haul, list of Hall of Famers from Boston, like Bill Walton over there? You know, to really be a part of a, a major tradition. You know, uh, you know, when I go back to the beginning, I looked up and how pissed off I was to slip in the draft, but to end up in such a traditional franchise, even coming from Kansas, which is the same way. Um, I couldn't ask for anything better. You know, I could have ended up in Vancouver. You know, nothing against these other franchises, though, but, you know, Boston is different, and we all know this. When you look at, uh, when you talk about sports, iconic sports franchises, you know, Boston, you know, you talk Lakers, you talk New York Yankees, Dallas Cowboys, you know, when we just talk about across the board. I couldn't ask for a better place to land. You know, I didn't know what to expect at the time. I didn't understand their tradition. I think this going into it, I hated them because I was a Laker fan, but, you know, once I was able to join the family and be around legends such as Bill Russell, Bob Cousy, Tommy Heinsohn on a night in, night out basis, um, it was a dream come true because me being a historian of the game, um, Red R back, you know, just, I couldn't ask for anything better. I, I always remember you holding up that MVP trophy in 2008, <laughs> your, your celebration, winning with your big three, winning the Celtics' last championship. Uh, take us back to that moment, that time, and how special that was for you. I mean, it was so special to me because I just remember when I grabbed the trophy, I yelled as loud as I could. And, and that, was, that was for all the pain and all the hard work and dedication that I put in the sport just, to, just for that one moment, man. You people don't understand the sacrifices we make to be able to celebrate that one moment. And it was just like a flashback of the line drills, the waking up at 5 in the morning, to just the, all the hardships you go through for that one moment. And uh, it's a special moment when you stand on top of the mountain and you hold that trophy up because you know your whole life you, you worked your butt off for it. And uh, you know, some of us are able to achieve it more than one time. Some of us never achieve it. You know, and, I, and I'm happy to be able to achieve it that one time. And you know, the crazy part is that I hear like when you, when you do it once, people are like, you ain't do it, no, you didn't do it again. It doesn't matter. You know, I was able to get there, and, uh, you know, I'm happy. First question is on Zoom. Hey, Paul, John Corrales here from Boston Sports Journal. Um, there was a moment there where you didn't think you were going to be a Celtic before the championship. What does it mean to you now to be going in as a Celtic, to have that moment of redemption, mm -hmm. to, to get on that page with Doc, to get KG in? What does it mean to you after all of that that you've gone through to be here in this moment? Um, you know, I'm just happy I'm able to create some history with one of the greatest sports franchises ever. You know, who knows? You know, when I was going through that process of being frustrated and, you know, wanting that opportunity, you know, you never know if it's ever going to happen. Like, if we all have that saying, like, we don't know if the grass is greener on the other side. You know, maybe it would have happened somewhere else, but maybe not. And I'm just happy that I was able to, you know, ride it out through all the tough times. Because um, the fans in Boston really appreciate it. You know, I mean, I don't know how it is in other franchises, uh, but you know they really appreciate it. You know, every time I come back to the city, you know, you go out to eat, you go out different places, it's just, it's appreciated forever. And I, and I see that with the other great players that's been through Boston. And I appreciate the, the players who come before me, you know, who laid the path. And, uh, you know, I'm thankful that things worked out the way they were supposed to work out. And because who knows, you know, if I ended up somewhere, you know, I almost ended up in Portland. And that was a bad place at the time. <laughs> uh, when I think back, you know, a lot of people don't know that story. I, I, that, I'll save that for another day. But it was close to happening. But... Uh, like I said, um, to be able to enjoy it in Boston, I couldn't have scripted it even any 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 better, man. A LA kid, an Inglewood kid, growing up, <clears throat> uh, a Laker fan, and celebrating in Boston. Who would have thought? <laughs> Next question is from one of your Globe buddies, man, Gary Washburn. Uh, 
the people that doubted you over the years, and starting from, as we talked about, Inglewood High School all the way through, I mean, how did that motivate you? And what brought that ultimate confidence you, you've always had in yourself? I mean, I, I remember when you won a three-point title, you, you said you were going to win it, you know, you held up the trophy. I mean, you've always called your shot, but you've always made it, made it happen. Well, my mother always taught me if you don't believe in yourself, nobody else is going to believe in you. And, uh, you know, that's pretty much the story of my career. You know, I've always been, you know, my brother used to always like to call me the Rodney Dangerfield, you know, just no respect uh, of the game. And, uh, you know, I just kind of like embrace that. You know, it is what it is. And so, you know, being the underdog that didn't have a lot of expectations wore a chip on his shoulder. Uh, like you said, from the, from day one from the draft, you know, expected to go top and went 10th. Um, entering the three-point contest and, you know, guys like Curry and Chauncey Phillips and, 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 uh, and I overcame. So, you know, I, I'm happy with my role. You know, it, it made me, it's just who I am. You know, a guy who's going to scratch and claw for everything. And I know at the end of the day that I earned every, everything I got. You know, nothing was ever given to me. And... You know, I, I love that. You know, you have these guys who are heralded coming in and everything's thrown to them. And I wasn't that guy, but it wouldn't have made, I wouldn't have been the player I am today. I wouldn't be standing here if there was any other path. And uh, I'll, I'll take it any day. Next question, NBA.com, Steve Ashburner. Hi, Paul. Um, 99 out of 100 people, if you asked them on the street, would probably say, well, he played his whole career with Boston. Uh, and, and towards the end there, it, it, for some of us, it was a little like seeing Joe Montana with the Chiefs. Uh, but what do you, when you look at those last few seasons, what did it mean for you in terms of the, the context of finishing on your terms, finishing on your time? Well, yeah, that, that, that's interesting you ask that because I tell players all the, all the time that Sometimes you wake up, and like you said, I finished on my terms. I retired when I wanted to. Sometimes you wake up, and the game retires you, and you don't know it. You know, you don't get that call, uh, that invite, and I'm just happy that I, I was able to do that. You know, yes, you said a lot of people will always remember me for a Boston Celtic, but I, I had some influences in all the places I've been, in Brooklyn uh, and Washington, and even back home, you know, ending off with the Clippers. And so, uh, but like I said, I'm thankful for that. You know, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of players who, who don't have that opportunity. And I'm happy that I was able to end it at home in front of family and friends where it all started. Uh, you know, just to see them one, one last time in the stands. A lot of people didn't make that trip to Boston where I grew up. And so uh, just to be able to finish on my terms in my hometown meant a lot. Got another question in the room? Paul, it's getting uh, more rare for players in today's NBA to, you know, win a title with their original team, uh, particularly going through up and down times. I know you talked about it a little bit earlier, but how much, how much pride do you take now, especially in hindsight, for, you know, sticking through in that part of your career? Wait, um, can you repeat the last part? How much pride do you take in that now, just being able to win with your original team that, you know, it's always like having drafted you and, you know, sticking through with them? Well, I mean, I, I take a lot of pride and I hang my hat on that because, you know, we, we're in a different era, a different time where, where, you know, it's different now. You know, players, you know, move around a lot. Um, they manufacture their teams. Um, you know, the way we did it was a little different. You know, I mean, every, people will say, you know, oh, I played on the new era uh, super team. But it was like, you know, we had to get lucky. You know, we got lucky with the draft pick. We got lucky with the trade. Uh, we got lucky with Kevin, Kevin Garnett uh, dropping his no trade clause. So all these things had to line up, you know, whereas today, you know, guys, they, they, they manufacture, you know, playing with each other, you know, building super teams through free agency, you know, building friendships. And I have nothing against that. But and that's why I take so much pride in, you know, being with the team I was with so long, going through the tough times and finally being able to win. Uh, Win a championship. And I mean, the only regret I have is not winning that second one. And so uh, that's it. Uh, Paul, your final question is coming from Zoom. Paul, hey, it's Dan Wakey with the Los Angeles Times. Uh, congratulations. Sorry, I couldn't be there to, to celebrate this. Um, you talked about growing up a Laker fan and then 
um, having to go kind of compete against LA um, and the Laker fans really for your whole career, <laughs> wherever you stop. Um, did you embrace that? And, and what were those summers like kind of coming back to LA as a Celtic? Um, what was it like around town? And, and, and did you enjoy any of that kind of villain isn't the right word, but um, kind of coming back uh, as sort of a, a Celtic and as a champion to Los Angeles? You know, to be all honest, it, it was tough. And, I, and I'll tell you guys why it, it was tough, you know, being in L.A. Um, you know, being a kid from Los Angeles, playing for Boston, yes, yeah, a rival. But, you know, a kid from L.A. to get booed, you know, being at home. You know, most places we went, we went, we went to different cities. And, you know, you had players that were from Houston or something and, or, or Milwaukee or whatever, and they get cheered when they go to their hometown. You know, that, that wasn't really a great feeling. You know, being a kid from the Inglewood, Los Angeles area, getting booed at home, a place where I made a name for myself. Uh, inside, it didn't feel good. But I knew I had to embrace it, and I knew what it was. You know, it was because of the jersey I wore. Maybe if I had to play for a different franchise, it would have been different. But it really hit me when I played in the All-Star game in L.A., and I got booed in L.A. And I'm like, wow, I'm from here, and, I, and I'm getting booed. <laughs> and so, but... Uh, you know, that's just the, pretty much the story of my career. Uh, being an underdog, not really being liked. Uh, you know, I guess somebody has to be the villain. And if that's, you know, what I've been labeled and I'm able to win in a jersey that people didn't like, then so be it. You know, I accomplished a lot of my goals. I'm satisfied, I'm happy in the end of the day. And I work my butt off each and every day that I wore the NBA jersey. Um, sure, you get cheered tomorrow, man. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs>